Hello and welcome in this session of your course Pedagogy of Science. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh, your course instructor in this course. And in this session, I am going to talk about a very important topic, myths about nature of science. As a science teacher, as a trainee teacher of science pedagogy, you should understand that there are certain myths which are prevalent since long and which are associated with nature of science. Let us first discuss what is a myth. When we talk about a myth, if any wrong or untrue belief or explanation is being believed by many people, it is called myth. This definition of myth is given in the Collins Dictionary. Similarly, when we talk about myth, we should also think that from where this term has been originated. So the origin of the word myth lies in a Greek word mythos, which means stories, sayings, fictions, etc. It means myth is something which may be true, may not be true, but it has not been established and it is not a verified fact. That's why it is fiction or stories or simple saying. When we try to conclude that what is a myth, we basically reach to a conclusion that if over a long period of time something imaginary exists without verification, it become a common belief and we call it myth if it is untrue. So when we talk about science, we should also think that why some myths or some misconceptions are associated with science and it is not B. Many people have thought about it and one such person is McComas. McComas in his article in 1998 entitled The Principal Elements of Nature of Science Dispelling the Myths identified 15 issues which are commonly considered as myths in science. In present discussion, I am going to talk about all these 15 issues one by one. As a science teacher, what we follow? We follow our textbooks, we follow the literature which we have studied as a science student or as a teacher of science during our teacher training programs. But has anyone explained the nature of science to us explicitly? I think there is the problem. If you read the article of McComas, you will find that McComas also identified certain reasons due to which these myths are still prevailing in the nature of science. So let us see what McComas was saying that why there are myths. McComas was of the opinion that due to lack of philosophy of science content in teacher education program, the trainee teachers do not know what actual science is. And the second problem is the generally shallow treatment of the nature of science in science textbooks, whether it is textbooks of science pedagogy or textbooks of content. So as you've seen that the problem may be related to the content or problem may be due to the lack of philosophy of science in science textbooks and in pedagogy of science textbooks. So let us see what are different myths related to nature of science. The first in the list is hypothesis become theories that in turn become laws. This myth basically explains that if there are certain facts or observation by different scientists, they frame certain hypothesis to test those facts or observations, then they develop certain theories and when they test theories, ultimately the verified theories become law. So it seems like science is a hierarchical process. McCamus himself wrote in his article that there is a developmental sequence through which scientific ideas pass on their way to final acceptance as mature laws. This is the statement which is the basic reason behind this myth. McCamus said that laws are generalizations, principles or patterns in nature and theories are the explanation of those generalizations. So laws and theories are different. So every theory doesn't become a law. Some theory may remain theory because some theory may be verified 
may not be verified some theories may be verified practically some theories are still theories and they have not been verified yet the second myth is scientific laws and other such ideas are absolute it is again a big lie actually scientific laws are equal in importance to theories so we cannot say that laws are important and theories are not the problem is that people rarely appreciate that all knowledge in science is tentative the third myth is a hypothesis is an educated guess let us assume that if hypothesis is an educated guess then it is an educated guess of what if you see the hypothesis hypothesis are of three types either these are speculations about an explanation of why any law operates in one direction or in one particular situation then people try to answer of that why in order to test the hypothesis sometimes in laboratories hypothesis means a prediction prediction of what what will happen when i will mix one mixture to another what will happen if a ray of light fall on a mirror from a particular angle so we ask our students to make certain predictions about the experiment which they are going to do so that hypothesis may not be an educated guess then there are certain generalizations about some possible outcomes or observations with provisional theories so a hypothesis is an educated guess always this is a myth sometimes it can be sometimes it cannot be the next myth is that a general and universal scientific method exists actually if you see the science textbooks as well as the pedagogy of science textbooks you will see the steps of scientific method like observation question hypothesis experiment analysis conclusion and generally the science students start to believe that everything which is being studied in science follow this particular methods or these particular steps but the students rarely got an opportunity to understand that scientists approach and solve problems with imagination creativity prior knowledge and perseverance it is your duty to tell them certain stories of such discoveries where scientists have used such approaches dear teachers you should understand and you should clarify to your learners that science is no different from other human endeavors when puzzles are investigated the next myth is evidence accumulated carefully will result in sure knowledge is it true it is both impossible to make all observations pertaining to a given situation and illogical to secure all relevant facts for all time past present and future the proposal of a new law begins through induction you should read the bacon bacon's induction principle is very much important to understand the nature of science so the proposal of a new law begins through induction as facts are heaped upon other relevant facts so when new facts are coming the evidence may not result into a sure knowledge then the next myth is that science and its method provide absolute proof again it is a myth science is basically a subject to revision when new information is presented so when new things are coming the science is being revised you recall the periodic table how much elements were there earlier as soon as new elements are coming the periodic table is being revised periodically so science is a subject of revision the only truly conclusive knowledge produced by science result when a notion is falsified so falsification is a process in science you should explain to your students that scientists routinely try to falsify their notions next very important myth is that science is procedural more than creative so students and teachers start to believe that science always follow a particular process and if there is no process there is no science but it is again not true but it is again not true the problem is that majority of laboratory exercises which we give to our students are verification activities we provide them certain manuals in which they follow step by step direction and they develop this wrong myth in their mind that science is always procedural but you recall to many discoveries it is the creativity of the individual scientist 
which permits the discovery of laws and invention of new theories you should give certain examples to your students to dispel the myth next myth is that science and its methods can answer all the questions it is again a myth there are many questions in which science fails or science has no answer there are some questions which simply must not be asked to the scientists especially the questions related to moral ethical aesthetic social and metaphysical issues should not be asked because science simply cannot answer such questions let us have an example for example in future a situation may come where technology and science may be able to clone mammal but it is the society which will decide whether such cloning is moral or ethical there are many such issues where science fails to answer the moral questions then another very important myth is that scientists are particularly objective so they don't think subjectively they work only objectively but dear teachers you should remember and you must have experienced also that complete objectivity is impossible in practice even sometimes scientists hold merit preconceptions and biases about the way the world operates and it is impossible to collect and interpret facts without any bias so this myth also needs to be dispelled from the minds of our young science learners the next myth is that experiments are the principal route to scientific knowledge well you recall older discoveries was there any scientific method was there any scientific knowledge many fundamental discoveries in astronomy are based on the extensive observation rather than experiments you recall charles darwin his investigatory regime was frequently more similar to qualitative techniques of social sciences than the sciences so scientific knowledge is gained in a variety of ways including observation analysis speculation library investigations and also through experimentations so experimentation is not the only route or not the principal route of scientific knowledge there are many different routes too the next myth is that scientific conclusions are rebuked for accuracy no it is not true scientific experiments are repeated usually because of scientific conclusion attacks the prevailing paradigm so when someone attacks the prevailing paradigm science rever scientists redo their experiments so that they can verify the conclusion and biggest problem is that many scientists fails many times scientists do not get the results which they are expecting but they rarely report the valid or negative results in their publications and the basis of the knowledge which is being developed in the science are the journals or the publications which mostly report the valid and positive results so we develop a myth or misconception that scientific conclusions are reputed for accuracy next myth is acceptance of new scientific knowledge is straight forward but it is not true when a more accurate interpretation for the evidence is produced the scientific community will immediately accept it but many times it not you can take example of any pandemic situation any disease what are the reasons of the disease whether any particular medicine is working effectively or not you can see that sometimes you get accurate results sometime it took a long for example to develop a vaccine for a viral attack it can take years it is not one day or two day process so the scientific knowledge is not being accepted straight forward every time even if in a journal if a new idea is being proposed there is a peer review system which acts basically as a gatekeeper to the new ideas there are peer scientists who reviewed the findings and only then they allow to publish it the next myth is that science models represent reality so our focus in science classrooms sometimes is on developing models asking students to create models science models are just a representation they are not real they are just a representation of some abstract concepts or structures you recall the atomic model 
just take an example you start from thomson model rutherford model bohr model the whole concept of atom has changed with each model so which model represents the true structure of atom you cannot say one model exists until a better model is not coming so we should tell to our students that a model may be real or may not be real the next myth is that science and technology are identical no science is very theoretical whereas technology is the applied part of science McComas in his article clearly mentioned that the pursuit of knowledge for the sake of knowledge alone is called pure science while its exploitation in the production of a commercial product is applied science or technology then sometimes there is again a very wrong myth that is science is a solitary pursuit means scientists do discoveries all alone because many times our students recall or remember any law any theory any observation any experiment any invention with the name of one scientist but this is not true scientists work in research teams within a community of like minded investigators only rarely does a scientific ideas arise in the mind of a lone individual which is then validated by that individual alone and accepted by the scientific community so scientists work in group it took a long time that's why nowadays even you see that the nobel prize winners are not individuals they are two or three people who are working on the same idea either at different places or at the same place so finally the question is that for dispelling these myths what we can do as a teacher we should rethink the goal of science teaching learning we should focus on nature of science itself rather than just its facts and principles so in our science classroom our focus should be to clarify to help our learners to understand the true nature of science as a science teacher it is our duty to clear away the mist of half truths and reveal science in its full light with the knowledge of both its strengths as well as its limitations let our all learners appreciate the true pageant of science and be able to judge fairly its processes and products so dear teachers and teacher educators let us help our learners in breaking the myths and understanding the real nature of science so i hope that in this discussion you must have understood what are the myths associated with the nature of science and how as a science teacher in your class you can help your learners to overcome these myths and understand the true nature of science so dear teachers help your learners to understand the true nature of science and enjoy science and you enjoy too thank you very much